Hello viewers, welcoming all to my channel Fundamentals of Optometry. Our today's topic is the optical properties of contact lens. We know that there are different types of contact lens properties like physical properties, physiological properties and optical properties. So for today I have chosen the optical properties topic which I have divided into two parts. In this video I am going to discuss the part one of it and with the second part I am going to come up very soon in my next video. I did this for better comprehension so please do watch the video video till the end and I would also request you that if you are new to my channel then please do like and subscribe to my channel fundamentals of optometry and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get the updates of my latest videos so let's begin so what exactly do we mean by the optical properties of contact lens it means that the contact lens polymer should be transparent enough with an ideal refractive index to allow an adequate and uniform transmission of light across the visible spectrum and the light transmission should also be such so that the color perception also remains unaffected due to any selective absorption of light wavelength. So as I said before also that contact lens is just another optical device like spectacle. So the kind of comfortable uninterrupted good vision that we get with the spectacle we also deserve to get the same with the contact lens as well. But the thing is that the polymer should be such so that it is transparent enough and must also have an ideal refractive index considering the refractive index of the tear film and the cornea so that the refraction can take place well in order to get the light focused on the retina and give us a clear visual perception along with a good color perception too. So the various aspects of contact lens that we are going to discuss today in this presentation are the BVP calculation or BVD correction that is the back vertex power calculation or the back vertex distance correction both are quite interrelated to each other which we are going to discuss in the latter slide. Next is the magnification, accommodation, ocular convergence, visual field, aberration, astigmatism or toricity neutralization and over refraction. Now back vertex power calculation of contact lens. Now what is actually the back vertex power? It is nothing but you can say it is the effective power. Like whether we are talking about the spectacular lens or the contact lens, the effective power of it which is actually helping in the transmission of light or the refraction of light through that optical device so that the light can get focused well on the retina and can give us a proper perception of the image. That is actually the back vertex power of the lens. Now we have seen that after a particular range of power, the contact lens power differs from that of the spectacle power. So why does that happen? So that's what we are going to discuss here. Now first understand what is vertex distance. Vertex distance is the difference between the posterior lens surface and the anterior corneal surface. That is called the vertex distance. Now this is very very important thing because if there is a change in the vertex distance, then that affects the effective power of the optical device. Okay, so therefore in case of contact lens, the vertex distance plays a very important role. Why? Because in contact lens, the optical device is directly placed over the anterior surface of cornea. That means there is no vertex distance in case of contact lens. Whereas when we are wearing a spectacle, there is a gap, there is a distance between our anterior corneal surface and the posterior surface of the ophthalmic lens. So there is a vertex distance in case of spectacular lens, but in contact lens it is absent. As a result, that vertex distance power needs to be compensated while calculating the effective power of contact lens and that is actually called the back vertex distance compensation. So that is a very important thing in back vertex power calculation of contact lens. Now usually in Asians the vertex distance ranges from 11 to 14 millimeter and in Caucasians it is 12 to 15 but in our daily practice we take 12 millimeter as an average for every patient. Now here comes the value for the contact lens power calculation that is FCL is equal to FSP divided by 1 minus D into FSP. FCL is the contact lens power, FSP is the spherical power and D refers to the back vertex distance of the patient. Now uh, here are some examples to make the thing more clear. Say if the patient has a spectacle power of minus 5 diopter spherical then what contact lens are you going to prescribe? 
यू विल बी प्रिस्क्राइबिंग माइनस फोर पॉइंट सेवन फाइव ऑफ कॉन्टैक्ट लेंस पावर ओके नाउ अगेन इफ द स्पेक्टेकल पावर इज प्लस फाइव टाइप्टो देन द कॉन्टैक्ट लेंस पावर विल बी प्लस फाइव पॉइंट टू फाइव टाइप्टो सो ह्योर यू हैव नोटिस्ड दट इन केस ऑफ माइनस द पावर हैज रिड्यूस्ड एंड इन केस ऑफ प्लस द पावर हैज इंक्रीज नाउ दिस डजेंट मीन दैट द नेट अमेट्रोपिक वैल्यू ऑफ द पेशेंट हैज चेंज इट इज सेम ओनली द डिफरेंस इन द वैल्यू इज ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ द adjustment or the compensation that we are doing for the vertex distance okay but the net amotropic value is remaining the same and as a result the uh, the degree of light transmission that is taking place through the ophthalmic lens is same as that of the light transmission taking place through the contact lens for a given power now another thing you have to remember that this power compensation is usually done if the spectacle power Uh, is uh, four or exceeds four diopter. Okay, whether it's plus or minus. If the power is less than four, then we prescribe the same power in contact lens as that of the spectacle. Okay, because there even after the vertex distance compensation, also we don't get to see much of a difference between the two values. As a result, the contact lens power remains the same as that of spectacle. But after four diopter, or sometimes even with four diopter spherical, also we do a little compensation. Suppose if the patient comes with a minus four diopter spherical in spectacle power, then we provide minus three point seven five diopter spherical in contact lens. Okay, uh, this is one thing to remember. And another thing, in case of toric RX, you it is better if you can draw an optical cross and just note down the power in the respective meridian. And then for each meridian, you can do the calculation. Okay, and then you can again convert into the toric form or the spherical cylindrical form. now here again i i would like to mention one thing that whatever value you are getting in contact lens power after the calculation you have to tally that value with the uh, power which is available for that particular contact lens product which you are prescribing to the patient okay because sometimes what happens the value that we get from the formula may not match with what is given for that particular contact lens product that you are going to prescribe to the patient so that time you have to uh, go with the nearest value available for example say the cylindrical value after the calculation has come minus 1 diopter cylinder okay in case of contact lens but minus 1 diopter uh, cylindrical power is not available in contact lens in the in that particular product that you are prescribing to the patient so there probably minus 0.75 diopter is available and minus 1.25 diopter is available so that time it is better if you go with the minus 0.751 instead of 1.25 because in minus we always prefer to do the under correction rather than over correction so it is better you go with the minus 0.75 diopter cylinder so this is how you go by the power uh, you go by the uh, by choosing the power of contact lens for the patient Now here are some very basic and important points to remember for your daily contact lens practice many of which I have already mentioned in the previous slide that the vertex correction is not done till four diopter of spectacle lens power but as i said if the patient is comfortable with a minus 3.75 or with a plus 4.25 diopter spherical you can go ahead with it even after the vertex correction the actual lens power doesn't change in minus the calculated contact lens power is less than that of the spectacle and in hyperopia it is just the opposite it is more than the spectacle one now the fourth one which i didn't mention is that in case the spectacle correction of the patient is having a toric ratio of 4 is to 1 if the spherical cylindrical ratio is 4 is to 1 say minus 4 with minus 1 diopter cylinder at 90 degree if this kind of prescription is there and if the patient is not willing to go with the toric lens in that case you can prescribe the spherical lens to the patient but that spherical correction will be done after calculating the spherical equivalent of the prescription okay so first you have to calculate the spherical equivalent for minus 4 with minus 1 and then that spherical equivalent will further undergo the vertex correction and then the final power that you get will be the contact lens power for that patient okay so that 4:1 ratio can be for any kind of prescription 
just you have to analyze whether the, it is following this thumb rule of 4 is to 1. And if the patient is willing to go for toric lens, it is well and good. Then there is no need of calculating any spherical equivalent or any kind of that. In case the patient is not willing, only then. Okay, and this is the picture of a contact lens prescription which you all have seen in the clinic. This is just one picture that I got from the Google and I just pasted here. Now, the next important aspect is the magnification which is defined by the change in the retinal image size brought about by the correcting spectacle lens or contact lens because we know that the uh, retinal image size that we can perceive through our emetropic eye is not the same as the retinal image size that we perceive when we are wearing a spectacle lens or a contact lens. So, that change in the retinal image size is what is referred to as the magnification. The image is always seen magnified through a plus lens and magnified through a minus lens and that is the basic principle of geometry that we get to see in our day to day practice. So, coming to the contact lens magnification which is defined by the retinal image size corrected by the contact lens as compared to the retinal image size corrected by the spectacle lens. That means what? Suppose with a plus, con with a plus spectacle lens or a convex lens, the image appears magnified but for that same power with the contact lens, the image will appear less magnified. Similarly, in case of minus lens with a, minor, with a concave spectacle lens, the image appears quite minified, whereas in case of contact lens, the image appears less minified. That means what? The hyperops will experience smaller image size with the contact lens than that of the spectacle lens, whereas the myops will experience a larger image size than they would with a spectacle lens of the equivalent power. And this happens because the distance between the contact lens and the entrance pupil of the eye gets reduced. Okay, so this results in the change in the magnification or the minification with contact lens as compared with that of a spectacle lens for a given power. So that means what? That means that the contact lens produces negligible difference between the image size perceived by the corrected eye and that of an emetropic eye. So, this forms a very, very important advantage of the contact lens over spectacle. Now, coming to the next important aspect, accommodation. Now, very important and a very interesting thing to understand here is that always remember that a myope will always accommodate more with the contact lens as compared to that of a spectacle, whereas a hyperope will accommodate less with the contact lens as compared to that of a spectacle lens. Why does that happen? Let's understand from this picture. See, in section A, the patient is wearing a pair of convex lens in front of his eyes and we know that each convex lens is having a base-to-base -base prism combination. So, considering that thing, you can see that the nasal part of the lens has a uh, base out prism induced in it. So, when the light ray is passing through it, when the light ray is coming from a near object is passing through this, then uh, according to the principle, the light ray is bending towards the base of the prism. So, as a result, the light rays are getting diverged. So, as a result, the accommodative demand is increasing in case of hyperopes. This same hyperopic patient, if given a pair of contact lens, will accommodate less. Okay. Now, just on the contrary, you can see that in section B, the patient is wearing a pair of concave lens. Now, we know that a concave lens is having an apex to apex prism combination. So, considering that you can see that the nasal section of the lens has an induced base in prism. So, as a result, when the diverging light rays are coming from the near, near object, then they are bending towards the base of the prism. So, as a result, the rays are appearing to be converging. So, for that reason, the accommodative demand in case of myopes with spectacle is less as compared to that of a contact lens. So, this is the main concept that we have to understand. Therefore, incipient presbyopia is common in myopes with contact lenses. So, the last important aspect to discuss for today is convergence. It is again almost the same as that of accommodation as I have discussed in the previous slide. Now, here also a hypero will converge more with the spectacle lens because of the induced base out prismatic effect. Therefore, that base out prism acts like an exercising prism. Whereas in case of myope, the myopes will converge less with the spectacle lens because of the induced base in prism which acts like a relieving prism. 
so this particular concept is very important to be remembered because often in our daily practice we may see patient coming with a complaint of headache or some kind of uh, discomfort or uh, eye strain this kind of complaint the patient may come up with now you may see that everything is fine the contact lens par is perfect there is no dry eye the uh, patient is also not over wearing the lens the lens is also fine everything is perfect yet the patient is complaining so then you have to correlate the symptoms with this particular phenomenon of accommodation and convergence because these are the two simultaneous phenomena taking place together and then this can be the probable cause behind the patient's headache or the eye strain taking place so in that case you can regulate the wearing schedule for the patient you can or you can explain the patient about the this particular reason which is actually bringing about this uh, complain or this discomfort in the patient okay therefore it is very important to understand and remember so that's all for today hope uh, my this particular video will make uh, some portion of the optical properties of contact lens clear to you i'll come up with the second part very soon so keep watching and uh, if you have any relevant questions related to this please come up with that in the comment section i'll try to revert to you as soon as possible so till then please take care and stay safe thank you